Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I do fountain pen reviews and related things. And today it's a viewer requested review. Back earlier in the year, very early in the year, Parker came out with this pen. This is the 51 reissue for 2021. And I like this pen. Okay, I do. I like the pen. I do think, you know, marketing and pricing are off. I still think that after having it this long. However, I do like the pen. There are things to like about it. I'm going to go through all of that again because I can just put a link to that video above and in the description below. But when this pen came out, so did this pen, the Jinhao 85, a pen that so closely matches this pen in ability and things and in design, although there are key differences, which I mentioned in that video that is linked, that some people question, is this pen really this pen? And my answer is no, I don't think that they are. Then later on, this pen came out. This is the Jinhao 86. And as you can see, if this had come out first, I think we would have asked that question even more seriously. There are key differences. You'll notice that the lengths do not line up. There are just key design differences and material choices and things like that. But wow, that is even even closer and probably for some people even more confusing. And I actually don't like it when the designs are so close that they can be confusing. For me, that becomes uh, a line that probably should not be crossed. But we've talked about that before and, and dealt with that in other videos. But today I want to look at this pen on its own merit. So we'll look at the design. I'll give you a quick overview and we'll do a writing test because if it doesn't write, it's a total waste of time. And I'll tell you whether or not I can recommend the Jin Hao 86 as well as I can the 51 or the 85. Let's flip that camera. Okay, so let me start with the 85. The 85 is a metal pin with a lacquer finish and this more uh, more like the Parker Deluxe gold tone cap. Other than that, there aren't that many differences, but that's that's pretty much a different design choice. This pen I bought for about $8 with free shipping. It takes a couple of weeks to get here, but a very good deal. Similar to that is a stainless model, flighter version of the pen, which I do, of course, also like. The plastic version of the pen came out a little bit later. They kind of did this in stages, I don't know, maybe just as they did production runs, but it, it was the 86 and then the flighter and then this pen came out a little bit later and this is what I got some requests to review. You will notice this looks much more uh, like the uh, Parker reissue. Even that color is pretty close. It's not identical, but it's pretty close. So this is much more like that pen, which for me is not a priority. I actually, I like it when Jin Hao differentiates their pens more, not less. For example, the 51A is another Parker 51 inspired pen, uh, but it is very much its own pen. It has a very different clip, which I do like, and uh, it's not really trying to look like it's the other pen. I like it better when there's differentiation. This pen is the one we're looking at today, the 86. And you will notice that the feathers are the same as the 85, and so not uh, as much detail it's stamped and not uh, engraved or cut in, so that's that's different. The, uh, the band here has the Jin Hao name etched in it. It doesn't have nearly as good a detail as, say, the Parker. No model name as you roll that around. Uh, I don't think anywhere on here it says Jin Hao 86, just Jin Hao. But it is just a, a plastic body with a matching plastic grip section, and that's true of all the different colors, with this metal band. Very, very similar to the 51 reissue, but not identical. In fact, some will prefer Jin Hao's approach to this pen to Parker's, in that you have a true hooded nib. This is a true hooded tubular nib, and it's a it's a nib that's very uh, common across hooded pens from Jin Hao. Lots of pens have this exact same nib. It is a 0.38 millimeter. Uh, that would be considered generally an, an extra fine. And you can pull that out, by the way, carefully. You can pull this out and replace it with, say, a bobby nib, which would give you a... Uh, 
a line variation difference from the standard nib. I'll put a link in the description to a, where you can get those because that's kind of a cool thing to do. And it does come with a converter. Now these use standard international cartridges. The converter is a slightly different size. It's the kind of the Chinese international standard, but it will use international standard cartridges or Jinhao standard cartridges. That gives you some option. You should be able with some silicone grease to eyedropper this if you want to. And that of course gives you some more options even in a huge ink capacity. And that's something you couldn't do uh, very well with the uh, 85. Some inks react to metal and so you don't really want to do that. So this pen would give you eyedropper options that some of you may want. That would just be a very large capacity pen at that point. Otherwise, it's very similar to those other pens. You have plastic threads here and a liner inside the cap. I don't have any issues with this pen drying out whatsoever. So that's always good. So now let's do this. If you want to take the cap off, it takes one, two, three turns. So not real quick. I don't think I've really noticed it that much, which is funny. Usually I don't like a three turn pen, but it, yeah, it's going to take that many. So that's something for you to consider. If you don't like that cap, then uh, go with the 51A, which is just the traditional slip cap. That's actually the criticism some have of the 51 reissue. They would much rather it still just be the slip cap, it's just simpler to use. Okay, quick size comparison. That is, of course, the 86. This is a Caveco Perchio. This is a Platinum Preppy. All so far, about the same length. We have a Waterman Graduate, still about the same. Very similar in diameter, of course, to the Preppy and the Waterman Graduate, of course, the Jinhao 51A, no shocker, about the same. And then the Bic Multi-Pin, not that different in size either. So that gives you, you know, some idea of what that pen is like. Okay, so this is Rhodia paper, and this is, of course, the Jinhao 85, no, 86. You see the problem that I'm going to have here? All these similar pins and names. And this is, by the way, a 0.38 millimeter nib. You can get the 51A with a number five nib, but uh, these hooded versions and the 86s and the 85s are all hooded, uh, are 0.38 millimeter, which is generally an extra fine in Chinese pins. Okay, so this is a Noodler's Black. Here's the thing. My book, with all that information, is not with me. So this is either Noodler's Eel Black or Heart of Darkness. Those of you with an eagle eye may be able to tell the difference, but uh, <laughs> I don't have a clue looking at this which one of those it may be. It's it's black and it's from Noodler's. That's, that's what I can tell you. You're not going to get line variation with these nibs. They're really not, ooh, they're really not made for that. Wetness, fairly dry, uh, this particular one, and with that ink, fairly dry, and uh, that's fine. It's an extra fine nib. It's generally not going to be very wet, is it? Okay, now why do we write numbers and letters? Mainly, to show you kind of the line variation or lack thereof, to show you whether or not it scratches in certain directions or whether it doesn't. These are things that you're inspecting when you're reviewing a pen. Uh, some pens will write smoothly on the downstroke, but then you go this direction and something is wrong with that nib and there'll be a scratch, there'll be a catch. Uh, you know, it, it just depends. So that's if you've ever wondered, why do they do that? This is why we do that. And uh, it just allows you to see the character of the line that a fountain pen is going to draw. That's part of the draw of uh, fountain pens, is that there's a little bit more variation, even when there's, we would consider this very little variation. But, but it's there. There is a dynamic to that line that you don't get 
from a ball point without a lot of effort. And uh, that's why we that's why we check those things. So, All right, let's wrap up. Do I like this pen? What are the pros and the cons? Well, a great pro is it's still a Parker 51 styled pen, and there are a lot of those on the market. It's very crowded. So you have to ask the question too, okay, do I like it? Yeah, I like all of these. What recommends this particular pen? Well, it is a great value. Again, I got all of these for uh, you know less than the price of a Lamy Safari. And for me, that means that I got a pen for me and a pen for three people uh, in my life that I'm going to give the rest of those pens to. The holidays are coming up. So it's it's if you hurry, and you're gonna have to hurry to get them in time at the time of this recording, you might be able to get these in time for the holidays. And it just gives me a great pen to give away to some people. And I like that. I like something that I know is gonna be good experience for them, that is really decent quality, but that doesn't cost a fortune because maybe they end up not liking fountain pens, maybe uh, whatever, they lose it, whatever. It gives you that option. Uh, I like that. What do I not like about this pen? There's really, there's really not, except that I would say this, there are so many pens like this at various price points uh, with various things that have positives about them. You have the 51A, which is an awesome bargain pen and even a little bit more of a bargain than this. Although this does bring to the table some quality improvements over this pen in parts of its construction, some nicer things about it, a little bit better aesthetic. So yeah, there are some reasons to like it. There are some reasons to cross shop it and see what you think about the pen and whether or not you think this is the best one out of these for you. All right. God bless you. I will see you in the next review and down in the comments. Be sure and like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, because I got a lot more pins and a lot more variety coming up in the near future. Have a great week.